Hi folks, thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Pramila, I'm a doTERRA diamond, and today we're here to talk a little bit about Douglas fir. And before we get started, uh, I've got a lot of notes. I usually don't do any of these calls with notes, but Douglas fir apparently requires some notes for me. And I wanna start this call first by apologizing for two reasons, and they're related and contradictory at the same time. First, I wanna apologize for not talking to you about Douglas fir sooner. And second, I'm going to apologize because I think your mind is going to be blown because Douglas fir is not just a deliciously smelling oil. It could actually really rock you if um, you kind of put to practice some of the things that I am going to tell you today. So we're going to start with the usual suspects. Um, if you look up Douglas fir in your book or uh, on the doTERRA website, the first thing that comes up is that Douglas fir is really, really good for your skin. It is cleansing and purifying. So let's translate that. What does that mean? It's very cleansing and purifying, which means that it is really great for skin that is prone to being clogged. For those of us who have large pores, um, Douglas fir is a really great uh, way for you to kind of clear those pores out. So putting it in with a little bit of witch hazel um, or putting it in um, baking soda or anything, any of your clean, uh, you know, your face, face care uh, regimen is going to be very, very beneficial for you. Uh, so in relation to skin, uh, with it being cleansing and purifying, what this also translates for you is that it's a great go-to oil to have in your first aid kit that is going to be good for wound care or anything that might require uh, that antiseptic, antiviral property for you, you know, in order for you that you want to tap into. Um, it's cleansing and purifying properties in terms of skin care or personal care also translates to um, taking care of any kind of fungal or uh, nail infections. Um, so Douglas fir is really, really great for that, and it's a good for you, good oil for you to add into your rotation for your skin care or your personal care uh, routine. Um, another thing that Douglas fir is very well known for is its respiratory support. So if you have um, a nagging respiratory issue, um, if you know someone who has severe respiratory distress, um, who is using daily or frequently, um, you know, steroid, uh, uh, you know, steroid aids to help them with uh, normalizing their breathing, Douglas fir is something that can really help soothe their airways and help them and help support um, healthy respiratory function. So it clears the airway so you can use this this time of year not just in your diffuser but in your shower to clear out your airways. If you use a neti pot, you can put a little bit of Douglas fir over the bridge of your nose, never in your neti pot. You don't want it anything in your nose. You don't want any essential oil in your nose. So over the bridge of your nose as a steam inhalation, uh, it's really, really very soothing for your airways. So remember, if you want to support healthy respiratory, uh, Douglas fir is a good add-on oil. It's a good oil that can stand on its own. And for this time of year, especially when we are more attracted to, you know, the fragrances that remind us of Christmas. I know it's a dirty word. It's only October. But 10 weeks to Christmas, guys, it counted. So, um, <laughs> you know, Douglas fir is uh, a really good oil for you to be using uh, maybe before your workout or before you go out on a brisk walk uh, or right after or maybe during. So if you're planning on, uh, you know, keeping active um, during the winter months, Douglas fir is really very, very comforting for your respiratory system. Because of its cleansing and purifying properties, Douglas fir is also really fun for you to add in your cleaning uh, supplies. So if you have a disinfecting spray or you have, you've made a soft scrub uh, to replace your toxic chemicals in your home, as far as your cleaning goes, Douglas fir is a really powerful add-on. It also scores very high uh, on the Orex scale, something like 69,000 or something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just going off memory. I think it's 69,000. Um, 
Um, so it is actually really, really good in terms of its antioxidative properties as well. So that's one of the reasons why it actually helps reduce fine lines, wrinkles uh, on your skin. And it is also really, really powerful um, uh, for you to use in purifying your air, um, adding a few drops on your logs before uh, you start a fire or in your cleaning supply. Um, another thing that Douglas fir is really good for, for those of us who tend to overheat or have muscle tension or aches and pains that uh, we feel soothed with, you know, like a cooling pad or an ice pack, um, Douglas fir is really, really good to add to that rotation. So other oils that also have this property include peppermint or wintergreen or spearmint or even eucalyptus. So you can add Douglas fir into that rotation. If you have sore muscles that, uh, or, you know, if you have an injury that might, um, you, you know, that you think would feel soothed, uh, with the add addition of like of an ice pack, you can actually try uh, mixing Douglas fir and wintergreen, and applying it to uh, the spot topically. So uh, it's also very nice in a bath, and that doesn't mean that if you put Douglas fir in your bath, you're going to feel cold. It gives your body the soothing benefit of what it would feel like if you were to put an ice pack on, not necessarily the coldness is not going to make your bath cold it's going to kind of give you that neurological support so uh, douglas fir is really really good for that some complementary oils that pair well with douglas fir if you want to use it as a perfume include cedarwood eucalyptus frankincense uh, juniper berry lavender uh, wild orange sandalwood white fir which smells very similar to douglas fir a douglas fir oh douglas fir especially has like almost a sweetness to it. Uh, peppermint, spearmint, eucalyptus, rosemary, and cypress are just some of the benefits of um, using Douglas fir. So uh, with Christmas around the corner, uh, you can make up some room sprays um, that include frankincense, grapefruit, uh, Douglas fir, uh, white fir, they're all really good, uh, so you can kind of spray your Christmas tree or have that around your house. Or if you're making gifts, uh, those are very nice. Uh, Douglas fir is a good addition for your Christmas theme, the Christmas themed presents. So as a bonus, Douglas fir is also great uh, if you're battling urinary infections, have uh, cystitis, and it can also help your body trigger the production of HGH, which is the human growth hormone. Um, it reduces cortisol levels. Cortisol is the stress chemical in your body that affects your hypothalamus, that triggers your fight or flight response. So uh, it is really good for that. Uh, it helps with overworked ligaments, muscles, tendons, and joints. So um, kind of making a salve that has a little bit of clove and lemongrass and Douglas fir, and maybe even a little bit of coriander is really great for the athlete in your life. So uh, those are some bonus uses for um, Douglas fir. So um, in the book, if, for those of you who don't have the emotions book, uh, I want to read to you a little bit about Douglas fir. Douglas fir is the oil of generational wisdom. Uh, Douglas and white fir share many similar qualities. They both address generational issues by inviting individuals to break free from destructive traditions passed down through their families. Like white fir, Douglas fir assists individuals to live according to their own conscious, uh, conscience and values by letting go of harmful patterns. It teaches that each generation can be a gift of new life, new growth, and new beginnings. Similarly, Douglas fir can also assist with increasing the bond within, within one's family. It encourages healthy family dynamic where people and meaningful relationships are valued over blind loyalty and tradition. Additionally, Douglas fir teaches individuals to learn from and value others' experiences, especially one's family and ancestors. It encourages respect for one's elders and ancestral heritage and Douglas fir reminds us that valuable wisdom can be obtained by learning from the past, especially from individuals who are older, wiser, and more experienced than ourselves. Negative emotions. 
negative generational patterns burdened by the issues of others, and positive properties, generational healing and respect for elders, wisdom, and learning from the past. Now, that's a great start. And this book is a wonderful way for you to tap into um, the basics of um, emotional healing with essential oils. But in the case of Douglas fir, this just barely scratches the surface. I think that it's only one dimensional what they're sharing with you in this book because Douglas fir is not just about us learning from our past, but it actually has the ability for us to not just um, tap into uh, our ancestry and the strength of our ancestry, not just the weakness, or you know, not just to repel the weakness, but to draw from the strength of our ancestry and then also influence change in the elders who may be trapped in their mindsets. So if you think about that, how can that apply to the world we live in today? I'm not just talking about politically, but also maybe in the acceptance of our families in the choices that we make um, in our lives, be it in our relationships, in the way we are, uh, in the careers that we have taken, or in the lifestyles that we have chosen, or the paths that we have taken that may have may be causing conflict between us and the pe you know the people in our family that's older. So there is a little bit of history behind that because Douglas fir is actually a very, very ancient tree. And it has a lot of mythology, not just with uh, some of the ancient cultures that are associated with the Douglas fir, and that those ancient cultures are actually very dominant in Native American mythology. So I'm gonna share a little bit about that with you in just a second, but I just wanna break for a second and open the floor up of, so that we can cover a little bit more in terms of the physical aspects that we've already talked about here. So if you have any questions, comments, or stories or feedback on how Douglas Fir has impacted you, or if you have questions or clarifications, I'm open to that. So let me uh, kind of, um, if, you, if you want to, please raise your hand. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. I will just um, find you. Uh, so, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, Mandy, I'm going to come to you because I know you love Douglas fir. So, tell me a little bit about the fir and why you love it and what you've used it for. Um, I just love the smell of it, honestly, and uh, when I wear it, I like the way it makes me feel um, more confident and um, I've been putting it in my hair just for fun. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I honestly, it's kind of weird, but I want to lick it. Just, <laughs> that's the smell. Well, you know, maybe we'll find out why. <laughs> we'll find out maybe. why you want to lick it because <laughs> uh, what I learned about Douglas Fir when I was doing this research, I kind of went beyond a little bit deeper because I found a lot of stuff about Douglas Fir just from like ancient medicine. And, you know, um, oh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Muir, last name, is it John? No. Is that, that's a singer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's that, you know, cons conservationist. Um, he wrote a lot about Douglas fir. Um, I think I need Douglas fir right now. I'm not think being very focused. But uh, so... You know, you, the fact that you're attracted to Douglas fir is great. So in learning about some of the uses for it, you know, and great, you know, putting it in your hair, there's nothing wrong with that. But from what you've learned today, how can you adjust your application just a little bit? Um, I probably will add it to my cleaning supplies for sure. Um, I was also wondering about, you had said urinary infections. Yes. So those are frequent for some people that I know. How would you apply that? Okay, so one of the things that I think I'm ready to kind of venture into and actually teach you guys, because before I was just like, uh, is reflexology, right? So even if you were to look in your book and find that reflexology point of, you know, for where the kidney and the bladder um, is, you know, that's a good spot. If you don't know where, just put it on the whole foot. It doesn't matter. 
Um, of course, you know, applying it in the lower pelvic area, um, that's a good spot. Um, applying it, you know, where your kidneys are, that's a good spot. Uh, so those would be, you know, good areas. And of course, juniper berry is also good for urinary infections, cypress, um, if it's a kidney stone, um, then, you know, cypress, it's really good for that. It's so grapefruit and purify. Actually, uh, I was surprised. Actually, my son made himself a blend, and it was purify and Douglas fir, and I think he put lime, and it smelled so good. And he was like spraying himself and his backpack and everything with it. I'm like, what are you doing? And he said that for some reason, he said everybody was sick in school and so he needed to clean everything. I don't know. So it's, but the long story short, it's not really, really good. So, um, and I was like, weird, but okay, that you have a <laughs> infection because this is going to work for that too. So <laughs> yeah, he had juniper berry in it too. That's why I was like, ah. Oh. So uh, that would work for that. Okay. Um, and also other things that um, I f forgot to mention that Douglas fir is good for is actually it also reduces cellulite. I know that's been like a recurring theme. I've been finding a lot of oils that help with cellulite. <laughs> so Douglas fir actually helps with cellulite. So if you want to add that to your sugar scrub, um, it really is good for that. Um, it's good for anybody who has uh, and is struggling with mental health issues. Um, and we'll come to the, the child factor in just a second. I feel like I need to put that in a separate section altogether. Um, it helps clear sinuses. It helps clear exhaustion or soothe exhaustion, both mental and that burnout, you know, that burnout feeling. Um, it helps with pain and it helps with communication. So um, that's good for that. So uh, let me move on to Deb, uh, unless you have any more questions, Mandy? Okay, all right. If you could mute yourself, that'd be awesome. Let me come to Deb. Hi, Deb, how are you doing? Hi, Pram, I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing good, you're so dark, but that's okay. I know, I went to sit out on the porch because my house is full of people and they will not be quiet. It's okay. And so I'm on my porch and the light isn't bright, it's but it's so nice out. You mentioned HGH and that really got my attention. We just had one of my grandsons, Aiden, in for a physical and he was really hoping he was going to be told he has a lot of growing time left. And unfortunately, the doctor said no, he'll be lucky to get another inch or two. And he's only 5'4". He said the window has passed to address anything with a human growth hormone through um, a specialist. And so I'm wondering what we could do with for him with Douglas fir and if there's anything else to add to it. Okay, first I want to say that I'm only five foot. And I'm fine. So okay. <laughs> that is true. That is I don't true. know about the only five four thing. What do you mean only? But that's a <laughs> point. I get it. Um, okay. And you know, it's like everybody. I'm from Asia. Everybody's short. You know, you can just move to Asia. Um, but that's not the answer you're asking for. So I will give you a better one. Um, DDR Prime is a good one for him. Uh, my daughter is very very small. Or, you know, she, she was f like uh, four pounds when she was born. She was premature. She was at a year old. She was wearing three months clothing and could walk. So <laughs> that is how weird that looked. Um, no, three to six months clothing. And she was always extremely small. Um, and we celebrated this year. Uh, she turned 12 and she's wearing 10, you know, you know, clothing for 10 year old, which is a huge jump for her because she was just the year before wearing clothes for like six year olds. You know, that was her size. 
Right. It was, we added uh, DDR Prime to her, um, you know, to her, com you know, she could have been, a, it could have been a growth spurt. I don't know, but I noticed things, you know, just little things that are different about her, like just, just slight nuances. Um, so I would add the DDR Prime because the DDR Prime is really going to help with that, um, you know, recoding that cellular, uh, that cellular, uh, you know, blueprint. Now, if it is in his DNA that he's going to be short, I can't do anything about it. If there is a problem in his DNA that came after the fact that is interfering with his HGH, then DDR Prime and Douglas Fir is going to reprogram and trigger that into a more normal state. So if there is a block because of some kind of stress to his cells, we can correct it. If it is a problem in, or if it is a blessing or, you know, the way, you know, just the way he's designed, I cannot do anything about it. Does that, okay. make, does that make sense? It does. And that's what I was wondering. And I, everyone on his paternal side of the family, that's where it comes from. And so I think he has the DNA from that side. And I think it's, I think he's going to come by his height, honestly. Okay. But, you know, if you, if, so, so, you know, we can figure, you know, we can find out and Douglas fur isn't going to hurt him. And I think the next section is going to be a win-win situation in using Douglas fur for him anyway. You know, okay. the next section that we're going to talk about, um, because, you know, it's like, the bonus would be if that it helps trigger the cortisol, uh, the, the HGH. But remember that it also reduces cortisol levels, which is stress hormones. So if he's stressing out about not growing, then that stress is going to, you know, prevent any growing from, you know, being compromised, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the other part, the magical part of Douglas fir that I was um, able to find. But... Um, you know, it, I found this, it says it triggers HGH and that's interesting to me because not many oils, not many things do that short of you going to a doctor to take HGH, right? Right. right. Um, and, and they do offer that and I don't know how I feel about that, but that's not, you know, that's not my opinion to give. Um, so I don't know enough about it even to give you a proper you know, comment on it. But um, I hope that my answer wasn't, you know, too bad. So. No, that helps. Okay, great. Um, let me see. Do we have anybody else? Um, I don't see any other raised hands, but I do see some people on phone calls. Um, so 715-297-1708. I'm going to unmute you. Um, could I have your name, please? 715-297-1708. Dawn Conkle. Hi, Dawn. How are you? I am good. Good. Uh, do you have any questions or comments or feedback about what we've talked about with Douglas Fir so far? I hopped on late, so since I've been on, no. Okay. Um, well, we'll circle back to you in just, uh, you know, towards the end of the call, if you think of anything. Thank you. Um, Janie, we have you on the call. And oh, okay. do you have nice. any questions for me or comments? Or no, not really. Um, well, yeah, I do. Okay. One question. Mm -hmm. Now, like, say, for example, um, somebody brought up the um, urinary uh, say they had a bladder infection. Okay, so Douglas Fir helps with bladder infection. How do you know how much to use or when to use it? You know what I mean? Or, and when to stop using it? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so how much is a small amount? Just one drop goes away. When you have, um, I call it a crisis situation, 
you know, a crisis situation is when your body is under stress. It's under crisis. There is a symptom that needs attention. So when that situation arises, um, it is frequency. And uh, what I've seen is you use a small amount, one drop or two drops diluted, and apply it the way you need to. And then you want to use it frequently. And that frequency, unfortunately, because this works really fast and you want to get on top of it, is every 20 minutes to every 30, you know, to every half an hour or so, or every hour, just keep on using it until those symptoms subside or at least are halved, right? And you would know. You, you just kind of address your body. You feel better. And if you feel better, then you pull back and go every hour or every two hours. And that sounds like a lot, but your body is under crisis. So usually the oils can metabolize out of your system when you're healthy uh, within a few hours or at most uh, 24 to 48 hours. But when it, your body needs it, it is going to actually metabolize through your body a lot faster. So if you look at it in terms of war and what you're fighting is the opposing army, you don't just, you know, you know shoot it a few times and you know, sit around and wait for the same time next day to shoot it again. You know, that's not how you go to war. You know, you send in your army in waves and then you send in, you know, the Navy, you send in the Air Force, you send in your snipers and it's in waves, right? You have a multi-pronged uh, approach. So don't just use one oil that's, you know, using your entire military. You don't just send everybody in at the same time. You have it time and it's consistent. You send it in waves, right? That's how you defeat the army. Because the minute you, you stop, you give them time to breathe. You give them time to regroup. You get them, give them time to, you know, find more supplies or, you know, call on more help. And you don't want to do that. So look at you, yourself as going to war against what is threatening your body. So frequency is important. And then when do you stop using it? Whenever you want to. Um, you know, just reduce the frequency uh, of it. Um, Janie, I'm going to unmute you. Does that answer the question? certainly does. All right. It's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, let me see. Who else do I have? Um, Maggie, do you have um, any questions for me or comments? I do. Um, so in the beginning, you talking, you know, like how Douglas Fir is with the wound care. The, um, for me, a lot of that, I my go-to for was the Melaleuca. Mm -hmm. So where does this compare to Melaleuca? Would you, you know, if the for the fungal or the nail infections? Um, um, so I think this kind of piggybacks off Janie's question. Okay, and I didn't hear like I could not hear like the first half of like all of that. Like it was oh, of, of my response and her question you know, like for her question and yeah, like so um, she asked you know if you have an infection um, uh, you know how often how okay. much and when do you yes. so, no in your answer what I got from your answer was I yeah I I understood all that and okay. stuff that yes Okay, good. So this kind of piggybacks off of that. So yeah. if you have a situation that you want to take care of, say for example, the example you gave me, like a nail fungus, um, you know, just using Melaleuca is like one approach, like one prong, right? So if you yeah. uh, piggyback it or like alternate it with Douglas fir or Arbavita or Arbavita, you know, you're kind of coming at it from like slightly different angles. Sure. And you are also addressing it maybe from a different source, right? Like what could be triggering that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, in terms of comparison, um, I would say that, you know, what's cool about this is like, if you don't have Melaleuca now, you don't have to be like, oh, I can't address this until I have Melaleuca. I'm giving you options. Right. Okay, yeah. So you can use Arbavita, you can use lemongrass, you can use yeah. now Douglas fir. You know, so before when we have issues with nail fungus, Melaleuca was 
always, you know, the go-to oil. Now we're expanding our horizon a little bit and understanding that, oh, you know what? I have this other oil. So for example, if you have a choice and you know you need to place an order for your oils and you are on a budget, right? And you've been using Melaleuca, Melaleuca has been a staple and you're running low on Melaleuca, maybe try Douglas fir instead. And try that, you know, as part of your skincare routine, as part of, you know, taking care of that, you know, fungal, you know, fungal, you know. So what you're doing is you're adding that versatility into your oil usage without necessarily changing your oil budget. But you're changing that versatility. And so it's like, you know, not just eating cabbage, but eating purple cabbage as well, you know, and adding a little bit of spinach and broccoli to your vegetables not just the same thing all the time. All right, hold on a second, Maggie. Let me just unmute you. All right, go ahead. No, yeah, it definitely makes complete sense. Okay. And that's, yeah. Nope, and that's what I try to do. If something's not working, you know, then we go. Um, like tonight, the kids are, I can tell that they're starting to fight something. So we did the Arborvitae and time. Yes. Good and one. then... I did put the breathe um, roller, the breathe stick on them then. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'll see how they are in the morning, but I think in the morning I'll use Douglas fir. Right. You know, so I have a lot of oils. And, uh, but you know what? I get kind of excited sometimes when I run out of oils because now I know that I'm forced to use the oils that I don't yeah. always need to. That's how I learn. That's how I'm like, wow that was kind of cool yeah i used it for that and it worked and you know i got the you know my face you know i use a lot of oils on my face because i'm really vain and lazy at the same time which is a problem you know you can't be vain and lazy but you can if you use oils so like basically it's like i don't know where to put the oil i just put it on my face <laughs> you know i know it's like most people like put it on the bottom of your feet i'm like ah, i want to put it on my face so it's like um you know any problem i have with my skin it's usually taken care of so, some oil will do it you know some oil will figure it out for me um so you know keep that versatile all right so let's uh let me continue and we'll come back to questions so let me talk a little bit about what the emotions book didn't cover as far as how amazing this oil is for the emotional and spiritual and mental aspect of how it can support you. So do a little, you know, if you want to do a little bit of reading, Douglas fir is very important in a lot of Native American tribes. Um, it is actually um, the oil that, uh, you know, they use it in teas and tonics. And, you know, they use the every single part of the Douglas fir tree. And if you look at, uh, you know, the Douglas fir as it grows, our Douglas fir is from New Zealand, which, is, which in itself is really amazing. So we're actually getting uh, a species of Douglas fir that has a certain character and personality to it that you don't find anywhere else in the world. Because the Douglas fir in New Zealand behaves like no other Douglas fir anywhere else in the world. Most Douglas fir that you find everywhere else in the globe is not invasive. It just grows. It, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's very respectful of the space that it gives. It doesn't, um, it actually nourishes and it doesn't take away from any of the other uh, flora or fauna um, around, but the Douglas fir in New Zealand was so strong and so resilient, so powerful. It was growing faster than any other species of Douglas fir on the globe. And not only was it growing faster, it was actually uh, growing at a rate that the New Zealanders could not control. And so it was actually causing what they, what they called it a green avalanche because the trees were falling down the hills and down the mountains and making that area uninhabitable. So there was something almost 
like almost like a soup, you know, like it was like Hulk or something. You know, it's like really powered up. Whatever it was good for, all the resilience and power and grace that this tree had everywhere else in the world was almost like amplified in this particular species of the Douglas fir. And one of the things that I love about the fact that we are using the New Zealand Douglas fir is because we are actually solving an environmental crisis that this country was facing. And it has become such a great viable economic uh, resource for them because we buy the Douglas fir from them. So not only are we helping the, you know, these trees find good use uh, in one of the ways that is so powerful because the Douglas fir tree isn't really, uh, you know, the wood isn't really good for like furniture building or anything like that. So, you know, it wasn't like a really good timber uh, industry, but it has a lot of medicinal value, which is why the Native Americans used it. And they used it as a, as a full body tonic. It is supposed to help with some major body systems. And we actually use the entire tree. So uh, we are getting all of that. So um, the Douglas fir, um, you know, the story of the Douglas fir is that um, it actually has, um, it is a certain, it is, there's a word for it, which I forget now, but it actually has both the male and the female um, aspect. It, you know, it starts with an M, but it, is, it has both the male and the female reproductive um, phytochemistry within uh, each tree. And so from a spiritual standpoint, it actually has uh, both, you know, masculine and feminine qualities, the yin and the yang. So it's like a very, it brings about a lot of balance. And so the Native Americans would use that uh, for different things. It would, they would use it to, uh, to stop rain the, when, the, when the rain was becoming too, over, too much for them and it was causing to harm them. Uh, so they would, they would, they would, um, they would bring this, the Douglas fir, you know, they would burn the Douglas fir and, you know, they believe that the smoke from the Douglas fir would actually bring balance to the torrential rain. They also used Douglas fir, um, and they would, you know, put Douglas fir out to invite sunshine. So, um, so it's like the counterpoint to too much rain. They also believe that using Douglas fir helped direct the winds now that's from a metaphysical from a metaphysical standpoint uh, or, or metaphorical standpoint how does that translate into our spiritual and emotional well-being um you know when we feel like there's just no sunshine you know and you know the just just getting wet you know like oh i'm getting wet you know it's just like it helps that you know, and it, you know, it helps that feeling and also helps you change the direction of the wind that fill your sails or are not filling your sails. So how do you need to change direction? So uh, one of the things that um, Douglas fir helps with, and we'll start with some simple things, it helps avoid denial. If you're always busy, if you feel stressed or hectic, um, if you have too much of a fast pace that needs to slow down, um, if you need to calm down and you're in hyperdrive, if you can't sit still, you can't relax, and you need to always be talking, that nervous energy, Douglas fir is the oil for you. Uh, it also helps people who are overexposed to high-tech equipment, um, and, you know, like television, uh, computers, video games, and other equipment, because it really kind of upsets that frequency. And you'll find that a lot of those people who are exposed to a lot of computer and high-tech equipment, there's this, almost this uh, exhaustion, this nervous exhaustion about them that Douglas fir can really help with. So the question you want to ask yourself and this is how Douglas Fir will help you, is what is it you do not want to face? What are you spending too much time on so you can distract yourself from the things that you should actually be doing? If you need those answers, use Douglas Fir. If you are done procrastinating, if you are done hiding your head 
in the sand, use Douglas fir, and it will help you find your way. Douglas fir is also very powerful for children because it is so gentle. It has both the yin and the yang, the mother and the father. It brings about that balance, and it also helps connect your, you and your child to, you know, it helps you form that bond. So if you have, if you know someone who's having difficulty either with um, postpartum depression or uh, children who have been in the NICU or, you know, ICU not getting enough of that touch, or if you have children who you are fostering, um, uh, or children that, you know, you need to feel, you know, you need to bond with teachers, counselors, therapists, diffusing that while you are in contact with the child, or if you can have that on you or even get that on the child, it will really help with that bond and that connection um, with that child. Um, it helps people, especially children, with feelings of inferi inferiority. Because if you look at how that Douglas fir stands, it is powerful, it is graceful, it is absolutely useful in every single way. Every single part of that Douglas fir was used by the Native Americans. It was, even the cones used to be shelter for little animals and creatures. And so the Native Americans look at the Douglas fir as the ultimate balancer. So uh, it, is, it helps with feelings of inferiority, especially with children, especially with children who feel like they are having a disconnect with the authority figures or disconnect with their uh, parental figures. Um, it helps with anxiety disorder, primal fear, and a sense of powerlessness. It is so on that physical level, it helps with circulatory weakness, respiratory weakness, nervous system weakness, and all of that, if you look at how it connects to the emotional aspects of your brain, it is that primal fear, it is that nervous energy, it is feelings of inferiority. If you have a child or you know an adult even who has a lot of hostility, maybe some of our presidential Candidates should use this before a debate, or maybe all of them. Um, it's good for hostility. Um, and one of the affirmations that I found in this Native American book uh, about how the prayer that was offered when they were working with uh, Douglas fir, be it when they were t burning it or extracting the oil or using it as a tonic, is I am open to listening to myself. I am able to be silent and be filled with knowledge around me. I am in touch with myself and my guides. Um, so it is very, very powerful in helping you with the emotional aspect and that spiritual aspect as well. Um, now, there are, there's one more thing. Let me see. I don't take very good notes. It's been a while since I was in school. So it is a positive force in terms of its, um, it's a, it, you know, so you know how I talked about the male and the female. So it is, um, the male aspect of it is how it is actually very protective. So, you know, we talk about how um, it helps with uh, your, you know, like protecting you from viral uh, it's very purifying, it's very cleansing. So that's that physical aspect of it. But what it does for you from an emotional aspect is also very protective. So if you want to amp up that terror shield for yourself or for your children in terms of uh, bullying in school, Douglas fir is a really, really great oil in kind of helping your children feel armored. And if you show them a picture of Douglas fir and find some information on how Douglas fir is so powerful and useful and then you tell them a little story on how this douglas fir is actually going to armor them it's i think that's very powerful um, on the feminine side it has that nurturing aspect to it so uh that's where it kind of gives you that mental clarity that protectiveness that feeling of connection it is also very good when it's um, um, paired with lavender to help with communication 
So if you, are, if you have a child that you're working with that you just can't talk to, who is blocking you, who you can't seem to reach, you really need to find that spot, that happy spot with. Lavender and Douglas fir can really help open up that communication line, um, especially in, you know, with children. So um, the, um, it helps draw out pain. So if you uh, experience, or if you wanna work with past trauma, uh, you can use, you can pair it with cedar wood because cedar wood helps you let go of past trauma. And so if you pair the cedar wood with the Douglas fir, it is actually going to help you not just let go of generational uh, trauma, uh, but any kind of past trauma. So it draws out the pain. And a lot of us actually have a lot of suppressed anxiety, suppressed pain, things that we haven't maybe healed from or dealt with. And this is a really good oil for you to use. And one of the things that um, it was, do was done with the Native Americans, they used a lot of Douglas fir, especially in infants and also in adolescents, because that is the time that we have a lot of trapped emotions that may or may not be true. It's just how we perceive it, right? So they feel that when a child is first born, it has the most level of inferiority because it is helpless and unable to do anything. And some of that can actually be captured in its cellular memory. So releasing that and allowing that child to feel as if they are powerful and able to do anything that they set their mind to is one of the powers or magical powers that the Native Americans believe that Douglas fir had. So when you're using that in terms of a teen or an adolescent who is feeling blocked and feeling inferior and um, in need of maybe some adjustment in terms of feeling um, more powerful, Douglas fir is really, really good for that. So um, I had another card um, that talked, oh, here it is. So um, if you are somebody who likes to work with chakras, um, Douglas fir is especially good for the first chakra, and that is for survival and support. It helps you feel like, you know, for, you know it kind of uh, helps for that survival mode and in in, in helps you feel supported. It is also good for your fourth chakra, which helps with uh, conditioning your love. And it's also good for your seventh chakra, which helps you uh, open your eyes to the higher informa information. So it's more like, oh, don't be so stuck in who you are and what you think, but kind of open your mind to a, a larger worldview. So uh, in a nutshell, Douglas fir has a lot of untapped potential. And it is balancing, it is grounding, it is protective, it is purifying, it is uplifting. And one of the things that I have found is that when I pair it with vetiver, it really sharpens my focus like sniper level, awesome. And you add that, add a little bit of in tune to that, and some powerful stuff happens. I'm already a really fast reader and I've got a really good memory. And when I kind of put this little combination of like Douglas fir, vetiver, in tune, and rosemary, not only am I speed reading, I'm like thinking at the same time. And I think I also tell myself some jokes in the meantime too. It's like a lot of things are happening in my brain. So um, it's a really good aid, I think, and a really good addition for you, um, not just for your brain, uh, but for your emotions and also for you to kind of bring your family together. Um, and this is the season. I think more than ever, this world needs a little bit of what Douglas Fir can bring to us, of more communication, more forgiveness, more power within ourselves, and a lot of healing. And, you know, it's that time of year that all of this is very pertinent. And aren't we lucky that Douglas Fir smells just like the season requires? So... Um, it's a great oil, and I hope that, you know, you uh, found this useful. So let me open up the call to some questions or comments, anything that you want to share. Um, Elizabeth, may I start with you? Sure. Okay. Um, I am jumping all the way back to the beginning, kind of with the 
um, nail and fungal infection. Um, my fiance actually has been struggling with an ingrown toenail for a very long time. <laughs> and I had him using a rotation of melaleuca, lavender, frankincense, and clove because it's very infected and very inflamed. Um, and I had it, it was getting better and getting better and getting better, but he was putting the drops like right onto his toe. And I hadn't, I introduced frankincense a little bit later into it and he ended up getting a rash and stopped full rotation and we're kind of back to square one. So I did like what I heard about the Douglas fir potentially helping with that. Um, what kind of rash? Um, it was like little red bumps. And his, his skin kind of turned red all around it. Okay, yeah, so rotation, yeah. You know, so that's because you can develop like skin sensitization. It's not an allergy. Um, so rotate the oils, but try cypress. Cypress. Oh, did I say Maluka? I yeah. can't remember that. That was like the main one that did the yeah. best for him, probably. Try so cyp. You know, try a rotation of um, cypress. Um, lost my train of thought. Ar Ar Arba Vita. Okay. Lemongrass. Um, Douglas fir. I'm like, what were we talking about? Yeah, Douglas fir. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then, you know, like the, the melaleuca is good, the, you know, the, the frankincense is good, but not really necessary. I think these other oils kind of like rotate that, dilute it, and uh, if you don't already have it, um, correct X. I do have that. Yes. I did think about putting it on there because especially, sorry if this is too much information for some people, but around the sides, it's like open wound, like... So that's why I thought that that might be, yeah. And, and geranium, but you know, the toe fungus didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with his toe. Toe fungus is usually a manifestation. There's something else going on. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna get better. You're only just gonna continue to put a Band-Aid on it if you're just affect addressing the toe fungus. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at what else is the problem and usually mm -hmm. it's digestive. Okay. You know, usually it's digestive or endocrine, like liver related. Okay. So, um, you know, try and take a look at that and see if there are some problems there. Okay. Um, is he on a probiotic? Is he on uh, digest digestive enzymes? Is he having some kind of digestive issue that we don't know about? Okay. Um, you know, and, you know, figure, see if there's a problem there. Okay. Because sometimes it's weird, but I've had people tell me that, you know, they just doing the GX assist cleared out their toe fungus. Okay. Or eczema or, you know, something that seems so unrelated, you know, but, yeah. it, you know, so something is there that it's not going to go away until the source mm -hmm. fakes. And we can put a Band-Aid on it. We can make it look good. Yeah. But... Uh, we want to actually get to the source. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to say? With how, how do you feel about Douglas fir? Uh, I liked what I heard, and actually, um, one one of the schools I'm working in this year, uh, I have a lot of students that have a lot of severe like issues and have been through a lot in their personal lives, and it did make me think about how I would like to diffuse that at school. And especially, I work in two different schools and specifically one of them, like these kids have a lot of traumatic things happening in their lives. So that's definitely something that it made me think of right away. Right, I mean, I believe that if more schools diffused, maybe we can prevent some school shootings. Mm -hmm. We can prevent one, I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we can. I, I see it. I see it in myself. Like, really, I should be in jail. <laughs> you know, the oils have kept me, um, you know, on an even keel. So, 
I was just joking. Yeah. <laughs> but really. <laughs> it's like, um, so thank you and try it and please yeah. see me if you see anything or notice anything. Okay, I will. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Kimberly, can I'm going to unmute you. Can you hear me? Kimberly? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Awesome. Do you have any questions or comments for me? Um, no, con no questions, but I'm really fascinated with the calming properties and of the Douglas fir. So I'm, I'm going to add that to our balance and serenity diffusing here in the house and see how, see how that works. Yes. Um, you know, and it's a great time of year to experiment with Douglas fir. Mm -hmm. So um, let me move on to Does anybody have any questions? How about you, Sharon? Do you have any questions or comments for me? I do have a question. Okay. Um, you said to draw, for drawing out past pain and trauma, you pair it with, and I think you said cedar wood. Is that right? Yes. Or what it? Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I just wanted that. to verify that. Yeah, cedar wood. Um, but, you know, I've read that cedar wood helps you kind of let go of like suppressed stress, old stress, because, you know, we think of stress as a, this moment right now, but a lot of our responses and reactions and the way we uh, perceive what happens to us right now is actually building off some of our past trauma, right? So you get sometimes need to let go of that past trauma for your stress of today, the stress of today to not continually manifest and continually be a trigger. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's something that I feel I could really use. So I'm, I'm really glad I was on the call even just for that one thing. Okay. But I mean, there's a lot of other ways I'll use it, but that really hit home. I, you know, you can clear your pores while you let go of the past. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I like, I, I, you know, like usually I'm like using Douglas fur on my face. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's, a, it's clearing my pores and like finding my other, you know, you know, finding my, my inner voice and my strength and all the other good things that Douglas fur does. So I'm like, oh, it's like clearing my pores and like reducing my hostility all in one go. Awesome. <laughs> it's like the ultimate spa treatment. All right, uh, let me go over to you, Deb, and um, let me circle back to you. Um, so, you know, you were talking about a teenager. So how does Douglas fur sound to you in terms of what we talked about um, in its emotional component? It sounds like it should be required for all teenagers. And I am going to get one for this particular teenager. Yes, he, I am afraid of him developing little man syndrome. Oh, the Napoleon syndrome? Yes. I mean, I don't want him to feel he needs to be mean to everyone in order to be big and to buy the biggest truck and the biggest meanest dog and and the biggest belt buckle and and look silly i want him to just come to terms and accept who he is because he's he's pretty neat he's a good kid yes he is so um, good. I, I hope. So, what what was your takeaway? What was your you know what resonated for you? So, you know, when you kind of try to you know recall like you know what Douglas fir is good for in terms of you know the biggest thing, that biggest takeaway. What is your biggest takeaway? It it can give you what you hope or wish. The best parents could give you 
in terms of your nurturing and and teaching you the important things that you need to know to get through your life without being hostile and hurt and wounded. Right. And I think Douglas fir would be a great addition to balance, to be honest with you. I think that would be almost like something that I would make, a, I think I'm going to make it a part of, you mm -hmm. know, my, my balance uh, blend. So, um, Joe, Mattello, Mattello, are... I'm hearing myself. Uh, Joe, did I unmute you? Uh, yes, you did. Okay, great. Um, do you have any reflection or any questions, comments? Uh, sure. Um, off the top of my head, I don't really notice too much uh, on the emotional or spiritual side that I notice uh, with Douglas fir, but uh, it does help me sleep really well. Um, I would put it on my feet before bed and uh, use my Serenity soft gels and it just knocks me out. There's a blend that I really like in the diffuser that has Douglas fir and a really simple one is just Douglas fir plus um, uh, frankincense. And uh, the first time I tried that, I'm like, oh, they should be diffusing this at some kind of sacred temple someplace. It just smells very holy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I have, I suppose. Yes, that's good. You know, you know it's um, interesting too, you know, maybe, um, you know, that you, you know, you're sleeping well with the Douglas fir because it was addressing some of the things that maybe you didn't know it needed to address. I would venture to say so, yeah. So maybe. Uh, so mm -hmm. great, I'm going to try that. And, you know, uh, not, but yeah, like looking at what you said about Douglas fir and frankincense, and I've got like some fun, some <laughs> running through my head right now, but I won't share them. Um, so let me, <laughs> um, it's, it's funny to me, but I will tell you guys later. Um, <laughs> let me unmute you, Mandy. Um, your favorite oil. So tell me what you thought. Did I do it? Okay? It's my second favorite oil, but balance. Balance is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I love the part about inviting sunshine. About inviting sunshine. In. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that's so I think why that I love it. I love it. Okay. And, you know, and you know, your, your lifestyle is a teacher. Lifestyle is a teacher. You know, like go, go, go. You know, like go, go, go. That kind of, that kind of. Definitely. Definitely. I wrote a lot of things down. I wrote down. a lot of things I down. Oh, Makes sense. Oh, Makes sense. But awesome. But awesome. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, I should sure. stop recording. Yeah, I should